Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very special and exciting American Cruise Lines webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations manager here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run about 35 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Caitlin O'D. Caitlin is the Business Development Coordinator with American Cruise Lines, where she assists agents in learning more about the product and helps to build their business with ACL. She has been with the company for five years, and she started on the sales team as a cruise specialist. She is located at the corporate headquarters in Connecticut, where she lives with her husband and her cat. And with that, take it away, Caitlin. Thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we have a lot of great changes happening with American Cruise Lines. One of them is a brand new itinerary. Um, so it is a seven night, eight day itinerary. I'm going to go through that. And then I'm also going to kind of reintroduce you to um, some of the great things that we're doing at American Cruise Lines, including some newer excursions that we've added uh, to our region and um, some new updates. So um, before I start, I just want to remind you who we are. We are simple sophistication with American Cruise Lines. Your clients on board with us are going to be um, experiencing great um, interpersonal kind of uh, service. It's very, very um, specific to their needs because we have such a low passenger count. The low passenger count allows, allows us to give everybody the personalized service that we really are defined by. So it's very relaxed on board. There's no black tie affairs or formal gatherings, not a captain's dinner. Um, you know, at most, maybe folks will be bringing a jacket to wear at dinner, but for the most part, it's very casual and relaxed. Um, it's just an opportunity for folks to, to get to know their home country, as most of our clientele is within the U.S. and a more mature cruise clientele. So I just wanted to give you a little background on us. I've done a lot of these webinars with Clea, and I'm, I'm not sure if I've kind of introduced you to us, um, you know, kind of formally. So we have been in business for over 30 years. We began in New England, you know, here based in Connecticut. The Robertson family that runs, runs the company is from Connecticut. We used to start doing um, the coastal region out here. We actually did uh, Connecticut River cruises, and then we expanded uh, down to Mississippi, and now here we are. And we build our own ships. That's important to note. I'll be going over for our fleet later in the presentation, but we do build our own ships. We are American made, flagged and crewed. Um, we do have a call center out in Utah. And of course here, our home in Connecticut as well and our shipyard in Chesapeake, Maryland. So it's important to remember that we are, um, you know, kind of built from the ground up an American company. That's really important to our clientele. Again, that semi-retired to retired cruise audience um, really do, does appreciate that opportunity to not only give back to the local economies of the ports that we're visiting, but also, you know, the economy at large in the U.S. And before we kind of get started with the San Francisco Bay itinerary, I do want to make sure everybody is aware we do have the travel advisor portal where you can book your clients. Um, you can find marketing materials such as images, videos, and we do have some webinars up there as well. You can check your current commission tier. Um, you can get certified. Uh, actually, if you complete the certification program. It's six videos that are an overview um, of all of our offerings in the different regions. Once you finish that on your next booking, you can get a $50 commission bonus um, and the details will be on that certification program. We do have BDMs and uh, group contact information and the group's policy on the portal as well. So you can take a look at that if you're interested in doing groups. And of course we have itinerary and ship details. Speaking of our BDMs, I just wanted to reintroduce you to them or introduce you to them. I think since the last time I did a webinar, we've added someone to the Northeast. So we're now fully staffed across the US. It's Sarah uh, Hamilton Moran, who's new to us. Um, and these ladies, all of their information will be found on the Travel Advisor portal. I think it's before you even get in. So even if you're not registered yet, go ahead and register, but you'll be able to figure out who your BDM is right at the entrance to the portal. Um, Okay, so along with California, we are visiting over 35 states uh, and uh, 35 itineraries throughout there. So that just means there's something for everybody with American Cruise Lines, but we are thrilled to present the California um, 
the San Francisco Bay itinerary. So this one's going to be a round trip out of San Francisco. I, as far as we know, we're the only cruise line doing this. And of course, highlights in this area are going to be San Francisco and Napa. We're already perfecting the wine cruises on the Columbia and Snake River. So we're really excited to add um, kind of the crown jewel of American wine countries uh, to our list of itineraries. So I can't wait to get into the details on the itinerary. But before we do, I just want to walk you through what our excursions are kind of about, how we get folks on their excursions, what have you, um, and how they pay for them or whether or not they pay for them. Featured excursions are complementary to uh, our guests. Premium excursions are typically $10 to $95 per person, and signature excursions have limited availability. They're typically more than that $95 price point as well, but that's not necessarily the case you know, across the board. It really is just you want to get those on as soon as possible. And excursions can be booked 60 days prior to to sale. So you're going to be managing your bookings on the Travel Advisor portal. You'll be notified when those excursions are available to be booked. Everyone is notified at the same time. So if you know, kind of going on that logic, you got to remember you have to be on it with the 60 day time frame. My recommendation anybody who's cruising with us um, that you have set a follow up for yourself for that 60 day time period, maybe even a little bit beforehand so you can kind of be prepared, let your clients know that they're going to have to make those choices. You want to do that within the week of that 60 days. Um, I work very closely with, with the groups department and I can hear people, you know, kind of waiting like a month or so and then they're disappointed. I don't want that to happen to you. Just make sure you're on top of those excursions because they are booked prior to the data sale, which is a bit of a, um, a change for us. Um, and as far as where you can expect which kind of uh, excursion, the uh, San Francisco Bay itinerary is considered a coastal cruise. Um, for that reason, we're mostly featuring premium excursions. The coastal cruises typically don't have as many featured excursions because uh, these regions have a lot to do in each port of call. So if you're going into San Francisco, um, folks will feel comfortable if they've been there before, maybe they have relatives in the area exploring on their own. Maybe they have a favorite vineyard that they want to get to on their own when, they're, when we're in Napa people are able to kind of explore on their own. Um, so for that reason, it's mostly premium excursions for folks who would prefer a guided tour. And these are small group guided tours as well. So um, we're not flooding ports uh, because we are cruising this area on a small ship. Uh, so I'm just gonna get started here with the first port of call. Uh, and in Stockton, uh, California, your clients will get a chance to dive fork first into California cuisine on the local foods and flavors of Stockton premium excursion. This is a walking exploration and it's going to bring your clients on an exploration of San Joaquin's local farm stands and markets with a local guide. They'll taste seasonal favorites and learn more about local farms and harvesting. Guests can also get a chance to learn about the historic city of Stockton on the premium sites of Stockton and Hagen Museum tour. The Hagen Museum is set in an impressive brick building that has stood in the center of Stockton's lush Victory Park for almost 90 years. Its beautifully remodeled art galleries featured fascinating works of art from 19th and 20th century masters, and the historical galleries will offer a glimpse into San Joaquin County's past. In Sacramento, we have a number of fantastic opportunities to learn about the history of the capital city. On the Gold Rush and California uh, State Railroad Museum tour, uh, guests will start at the Gold Rush Museum where they'll be able to immerse themselves in the history of the city while exploring a mining tunnel. Uh, and there will be hand-on exhibits there um, where they'll be able to explore um, and actually take a, um, a train uh, to see the California railways come to life through an engaging exhibit and a, rail, a ride along the rails. Um, and for a next level look at the history of the area, guests can take the Sacramento Underground and History Museum premium tour, where they'll be regaled about the dramatic story of how Sacramento lifted itself out of the floodwaters during 1860 and, and 1870 on these eight engaging excursions. So they'll actually be able to take a um, kind of closer look at the space that was created underneath the city. I didn't even know that had happened. So it's a really incredible, interesting look at that um, kind of phenomenon and you'll be able to learn a little bit more about that in Sacramento. 
In Napa, we're going to be visiting a number of wineries. I don't have a lot of details as to what's going on at these wineries because I know what's going on. We're going to be having some delicious wine. Folks are going to be exploring renowned vineyards and they'll be learning about the winemaking process at a variety, again, of different vineyards and discover why Napa Valley, California has become synonymous with wine. Um, so really a highlight for folks. And this is going to be, I'll be discussing a little bit more about themed cruises, but this is going to be um, a wine themed cruise. Uh, so that just means the onboard guest lecturer will be focusing on um, the wine aspect of the region. So a really comprehensive look at wine culture in California. In between Napa and San Francisco, we have a beautiful day of river cruising in the San Pablo, ooh, excuse me, <laughs> bay cruising, I suppose. Um, used to saying river cruising in San Pablo Bay. And we'll finish off the cruise with a bang, exploring some of the most iconic destinations in San Francisco. On the premium city exploration of San Francisco, a local guide will bring guests to, to top sites, iconic landmarks, and eclectic neighborhoods. They'll travel across the Golden Gate Bridge with a stop in Sausalito for a breathtaking view of the bridge and skyline. On the Escape to Alcatraz tour, uh, guests will, will travel via ferry to Alcatraz Island, as you do, and enjoy an exploration of the small island that was once a fort, a military prison, and most notably, a maximum security federal penitentiary. They'll hear poignant tales of American incarceration, justice, and our common humanity. <clears throat> Pardon me, I apologize. Finally, we'll be taking a tour of Fisherman's Wharf on the northern water waterfront, which will offer, of course, postcard views of the Golden Gate uh, Bridge and Alcatraz. We're going to wrap up that tour in Jura Deli Square as well, so folks can have one of those delicious Sundays and kind of take a look at the shops and restaurants in that famed area where the chocolate factory used to be. Um, so that first tour, uh, the um, more of a scenic uh, tour, the premium exploration, exploration of San Francisco is going to be more of a broad overview and a coach tour, um, whereas the Fisherman's Wharf tour will be more of an in-person tour. Um, so folks can either determine that if they want to take a look at the sites um, kind of in a panorama or if they want to get a cl up close and personal view. Okay, so this itinerary is going to be taking place on the American Jazz. This is one of our modern river boats. Uh, we're actually uh, referring to them as the American River Boats now, but um, you'll know them as the American or the modern river boat. They're unlike anything that has been on American waters up until um, recent times. We are the first uh, to put non paddle wheelers essentially on board these ships, or excuse me, this water. So this is a 180 passenger capacity uh, vessel, and it was built in 2010, excuse me, 2020, I apologize. And if you take a look at the, uh, the ship itself, you can see that there is an elevator midship. We did build these ships to the specifications for our clientele. I will you know, say briefly, there, there is something we should note that the um, clientele is changing a little bit. We did notice a lot of people much younger than we were used to booking with us, and that has continued to be the case. People are not looking to cruise in Europe um, quite as much. There are folks who are much more comfortable cruising close to home, um, so that's why they're looking to cruise with us. But because uh, the American Jazz was ordered a lot longer ago, um, it is still built to the specifications of our older clientele. Um, so there's no grand staircase anybody schlepping down. It's a nice, easy back and forth. It's a smaller ship too, of course, only 180 passengers on board, so nice and relaxing. So just briefly, uh, what we include on every cruise, gratuities are included. There's self-service laundry on board our ships. We always have onboard entertainment, which boards and disembarks throughout the cruise to give everybody kind of a nice overview of um, everything that there is uh, to offer in each region, sort of the culture of the region. The onboard guest lecturer will go over the history, culture, cuisine, architecture, everything about the, re uh, the region. For this particular cruise, for the San Francisco Bay itinerary, they are going to be focusing a lot on the wine, but of course there's a lot more to go through. It's a really fascinating interest uh, area from the gold rush to uh, the Napa wine boom. Um, so they really will be focusing on that in this region. So I always get questions about beverage packages with American Cruise Lines. 
Important to note, you don't need to get a beverage package for your client. Top shelf cocktails are available at all times. If you want a cocktail, a mimosa in the morning, or if you want a nightcap in the evening, always available. Um, and beer and wine is served at, served at lunch and dinner. But again, if you want a cocktail, it's just essentially open bar on board. There are library computer stations. Um, these are important to note. Um, I'm actually going to go back a little. You can see them in the middle of the ship. Um, you can see I know it's kind of small writing, but you can see the lounges there. Um, I like to note those partially because if you end up getting a guest who is booking next to those, because I, I just want to kind of note, those are quiet areas. Those are places where folks are going to be on their laptop or they're going to be uh, kind of reading. Sometimes there's maps so they can learn about where they are. Um, nice quiet areas. Um, sometimes we'll have some of our bridge groups situated in there, but a great place to be next to, frankly. If I'm going to be booked next to somebody who's, you know, basically not a stateroom, it's a nice quiet room. We also do have open seated dining. That just means um, at 5.30 when our cocktail hour occurs, um, you're welcome to come into dinner at your leisure um, and it's open seated. You can sit with whomever you want. With that low passenger count, we find that camaraderie is really important to our clientele. You know, if you're on a boat with only 180 people, by the end of it, you're gonna know everybody. So people really love that opportunity to kind of meet different people um, and mingle. So for that reason, there is no assigned seating. And this is locally sourced cuisine prepared fresh daily. We have really good relationships with our um, the farmers in each port, the farmers markets. We are really trying to thoughtfully consume as we're cruising through these regions, um, which I know is something that put, sets us apart. There aren't large kind of opulent buffets. We actually allow you to, to um, select a partial um, serving if you don't want a full serving of, of uh, food. We can also, um, make any adjustments to the menu if you have any dietary restrictions. Because you're ordering off our menu, this is not a, a buffet, very, very easy for us to make any dietary accommodations that you might need. Um, so it's important to remember. So I'm going to briefly go over the regions that we cruise, so just give you a quick reminder. Um, we are, of course, in the, e the East Coast area. Um, we have distinctive seven and six night itineraries, uh, the main coast and harbors. Um, New England Islands, Main Coast and Harbors is a round trip out of uh, Portland, Maine. New England Island is a round trip out of Providence, uh, Rhode Island. Cape Codder is a round trip out of Boston. And that Hudson River Fall Foliage Cruise, which we're about to transition to, is a round trip out of New York. Uh, of course, those first cruises are occurring during summertime, and that last one is a fall cruise. And we do have a 10-night Grand New England cruise. It's a round trip out of Boston as well. Um, and all of those New England cruises specifically are lobster bake cruises. So that just means we're going to have a fantastic lobster bake in each port of call. Um, the Hudson River is an exception to that, obviously. Delicious uh, fall food on board the Hudson River cruise. So I just wanted to grab one of the newer excursions to uh, the New England region. And I chose the Bar Harbor excursion where you can take a look at the puffins on the Maine Coast and Harbors premium puffin and lighthouse cruise. They'll ride in a state-of-the-art catamaran to Frenchman Bay and the Gulf of Maine to see the most sought after iconic symbols of Maine, the puffins and the lighthouses. Uh, and they'll see Petite Menon, Egg Rock, Winter Harbor Lighthouses while searching for puffins, razor bills, um, osprey, harbor porpoises, and eagles along the way. I've seen this in person, it's adorable. I mean, there's nothing to cure than these birds. So it's a great, I like that we've added this because it's a, a must see. So along the Southeast coast, we're cruising this region in um, basically everything but the summer. So obviously it's a little bit uncomfortable to be down in the Southeast coast. That's when we're in New England. Um, when we're not in New England, we're in the Southeast. So that's both the Chesapeake Bay area where we have a seven and a six night Chesapeake Bay round, Baltimore round trip and a 10 night American Revolution cruise, which is also a round trip out of Boston or excuse me, Baltimore. So those cruises are going to be focusing on what's known as the historic triangle. Um, so, you know, around Williamsburg, Jonestown, Yorktown, Norfolk, they're around. Um, and the American Revolution cruise stops in DC. So folks who are really interested in, in the American Revolution or American history, this is a fantastic opportunity for those folks. We also have the seven night historic South and Golden Islands cruise. That's really the most popular in the Southeast in general. That one is a one way from Amelia Island, Florida to Charleston, South Carolina. <coughs> Pardon me, I apologize. <coughs> I'm just getting over a cold. 
Um, so we also have a really unique cruise, the Great Rivers of Florida, uh, which is a round trip out of Amelia Island. And it's sort of the horseshoe at the bottom of the map there, um, going from St. Augustine to Lake George and back. Um, so it's a really interesting kind of combination of uh, regions where on the Lake George side, you're seeing very unique ecology. You're cruising through um, national forests and then the St. Augustine side, of course, the oldest city in the US and really spectacular architecture there to see. Um, on the historic South Cruise, you can experience old Florida on this guided kayaking experience. Guests will paddle Florida's black water known for its highly reflective properties that enhance the already natural beauty of the creek. They can meander through this peaceful wooded environment while enjoying the various aquatic vegetation while, and keeping an eye out for birds and other native wildlife. This one I selected specifically because it is a new addition. We're kind of really trying to reflect that our clientele is skewing younger. So they do want something a little bit more active. So you'll find if you take a look at the itineraries on our site, um, there are a lot more of these excursions that are a little bit more active like kayaking, hiking, what have you. So the Mississippi River is pretty much what we were, we are most known for, I should say. Um, we offer many fascinating itineraries, but I would say the most popular in the Mississippi is going to be the Lower Mississippi region, which is going to be New Orleans um, to Memphis is, uh, or the reverse. That's our one-way Lower Mississippi River cruise. We also have a round trip, New Orleans uh, cruise, and that one's either seven nights or four nights. Um, and we have a an upper Mississippi River cruise, which is St. Paul to St. Louis or the reverse, also seven night. Uh, if folks want to do that full Mississippi River cruise, that's something that people are really interested in doing. Um, I call that the bucket list. People want to do either the complete Mississippi, which is um, from uh, New Orleans to the north, uh, and that one is 22 days, or the reverse, which is 15 days. Um, a really spectacular opportunity to do that. In Baton Rouge, we have a new um, Cajun Pride Swamp Adventure excursion where guests will enjoy a narrated boat ride in Manchek Swamp, a privately owned wildlife refuge and a comfortable covered boat with, a, with walking room and open viewing from any seat. Swamp creatures are unafraid and responsive to our captain's voice. In the safety and comfort of the boat, guests will be able to get within a few feet of our jumping gators. And people can see all different kinds of animals as well, ibis, turtles, herons, raccoons, egrets, and much, much more. So a really spectacular opportunity um, to get to know the native wildlife in the area. Um, we also cruise the Tennessee and Ohio rivers. Um, the Tennessee River Cruise is Chattanooga to Nashville. That one's newer to us, seven days and eight nights. And we also have our Ohio River Cruise, which is 10 nights and 11 days from St. Louis to Pittsburgh or the reverse. On the Old Glory Distilling Company Experience Premium Tour, guests can enjoy a tour and tasting at Old Glory Distilling, a small batch artisanal distillery with a focus on crafting premium Tennessee whiskey and bourbon, as well as a variety of spirits, including moonshine, white rum, vodka, and gin. So guests will meet the founder who will give his personal insight into this history of the distillery as well as its operations. And of course, they will be treated to a rum punch cocktail upon arrival and they'll take part in some cocktail making contests um, with prizes for the winning team. Uh, there's going to be an on-site gift shop where folks can um, indulge in some bourbon pecans and peruse the mer merchandise as well. So the Pacific Northwest is another area that's very, very popular. Um, the Columbia and Snake Rivers, we do have three itineraries, um, basically going the same route for different lengths. The um, Columbia and Snake River Cruise is seven, nine, eight days, and we do have the Northwest Pioneers Cruise, which is essentially a longer version of the seven, nine one, and that one, they're both going from Hayden Island to, um, which is just outside of Portland, um, but somewhat isolated from it, Hayden Island to Clarkston, Washington. We've actually just also added a uh, legendary rivers and um, national parks journey, which will extend the Columbia and Snake River cruise to the national parks. You'll be seeing Glacier National Park, um, Grand Teton, and Yellowstone. Um, so a really fabulous opportunity. Do hop on the website to take a look at the, um, the new offerings there. We also do have the Puget Sound Cruise, which are both um, a round trip out of Seattle, uh, either a seven night or a 10 night. Beautiful, beautiful area. 
Um, so I'm highlighting here the uh, Lavender and Landmarks tour, which is on the Puget Sound cruise. Uh, guests can explore the bed and breakfast family lavender farm and wander the fragrant lavender fields and witness the distilling and drying operations in a historic barn where both culinary and fragrant varietals are produ produced. And at the Sequim Museum, guests can visit the Manus Mas Mastodon exhibit, which displays the earliest evidence of a human settlement in North America, dating back over 13,000 years. Um, so a really incredible kind of set of experiences folks can have in the Puget Sound area. And finally, people always forget that we're in Alaska. And really, for me, Alaska is our crown jewel. It's a phenomenal experience to be on such a small ship uh, that can get nice and close to the shore and give your clients a really intimate experience. None of these 2,000 plus passenger ships can do that. Um, we can't get nice and close to, to the shore in a, in a ship that large. So um, there are some places on the Alaskan itineraries that we are allowed where very few other cruise lines are allowed. Um, and our Alaskan itineraries are, you know, really a unique opportunity to get nice and close to that um, scenery. We offer the seven night Southeast Alaska cruise um, and the 10 night Alaskan Explorer cruise. We are also going to be offering a 14 night cruise in Alaska. All three of those are going to be a round trip out of Juneau. And we also finally have the Alaska Inside Passage cruise, which is 14 nights from Seattle to Juneau or the reverse. So we're gonna be cruising the Alaskan regions, obviously in the summertime. Um, I think I forgot to mention the, um, the Pacific Northwest we're doing for most of the year. We stop, we start in the springtime and stop in like late fall. Um, so for both the Puget Sound and the Columbia and Stake River. In Petersburg, Alaska, we have the LeConte Glacier Flight Seeing Experience. Of course, this one is a signature tour and you can see why there's not that much room in this uh, plane. So aboard a Haviland Beaver float plane, folks will li visit LeConte, Alaska's southernmost tidewater glacier. During the 45 minute fl flight, they'll zoom past their ship at the dock across Fredericksdown to Leconte Glacier Bay, passing beautiful blue icebergs, hanging glaciers, seals, and birds in the fjord along the way. I mean, really, really breathtaking. Finally, I just want to remind you that we do have a variety of themed cruises across the region as we sail. Uh, and these themes will uh, range from Civil War themed in the um, Southeast and Lower Mississippi to our Mark Twain theme, which is an Upper Mississippi River cruise. And we do have our vineyard themes, as I mentioned, on the Columbia and Snake River and now in California. And these themed cruises are a great opportunity to cater to each of your clients' particular interests. They're really proven to create repeat clientele and referrals, especially they're helpful for forming groups as it's easier to target a specific group. We really find people have a lot of um, success targeting, um, say, amateur sommelier clubs or uh, wine clubs on the Columbia River, and I'm sure we'll have the same success with the San Francisco Bay cruises with that as well. So I'm going to quickly go through our fleet here as well. Um, the American River Boats I kind of introduced you to already, they are newer to us. Um, they're faster, wider, and more environmentally friendly than any, anything that's been seen on American waters um, in quite some time. The American Symphony and Serenade are due next year, so we're about wrapping up the American River Boat um, kind of release <laughs> and introduction of them to our itineraries. And they're going to be cruising on the Columbia and Snake River, the Mississippi River, and of course the San Francisco Bay. So folks really do tend to think of the paddle wheelers when they think of us. We have these gorgeous, authentic paddle wheelers, um, and they're averaging about 180 guests, with the exception of the American West, which has 100 guests. She was purchased. Uh, she's the only ship that we did not build. We purchased her from another company and tried to do the best we could to refurbish the inside. But the staterooms are still smaller than what we would normally um, you know, build. Uh, for that reason, she is priced a little lower. She's a great opportunity to folks um, who perhaps want the American Cruise Lines experience but find the price point a little high. Uh, American West is the way to go. Um, and these ships actually re over underwent a uh, refurbishment over the past uh, winter, almost a year ago now. And 
you can really tell there's it's stunning. We've had such beautiful improvements done where before it was really vintage. It had a very Victorian feel. Now we have a little bit of a merging of the contemporary um, and kind of hearkening back to the golden age of American river commerce. So um, a beautiful update on board those ships. And you can head to the travel advisor portal to take a closer look at those interiors. Earlier this year, I introduced you to the Eagle class if you participated in that webinar, but if you didn't, this is something we're super thrilled about. These are hybrid catamaran vessels. Um, so they're going to be um, have a very, very low draft. So where we're in 500 ports, I think they're going to be adding like 500 more ports at the very least. Um, so we're already seeing that open up. Just keep an eye on us because I know right now off the top of my head, I'm not mentioning all of the new itineraries because I think there are four um, that we're able to add because of the shape of these ships. And this is unique to us where it's the, the front is a catamaran look and then the back looks like a regular ship. You can't see the back here, but um, it's a really exciting addition. And finally, we do have our coastal class. Um, the coastal class is going to be doing um, the coast. So Alaska, the Puget Sound and the East Coast. Uh, they have 170 guests. These are sister ships as are the American Constellation and Constitution, as are the American Independence, American Star, and American Spirit. These are smaller, they have 100 guests, um, and these are older. I think the oldest one was built in 2000. Um, but folks really love this 100 passenger count. There are some folks who refuse to do a higher passenger count. So we're hoping to um, kind of get those folks interested in an Eagle class. If you see there, it's 109 guests. Um, we find great success with the uh, low passenger count. It's what distinguishes us and it's why people keep coming back to us uh, time and time again. So especially on the river cruises, we have these gorgeous coach tour bus um, buses exclusively for us. So it provides us an option for people who are wish wishing to explore the ports on their own because we always have those guided um, excursions. We wanted to offer um, maybe folks are really more used to the drop, hop on, hop off uh, experience. So this is an opportunity for us to give them that opportunity. So um, these, that's what this will typically be um, operating, those hop, up, hop on, hop off loops in the area um, if folks want to explore on their own. And we're offering that at almost every port where these, um, are these, uh, these uh, coach tour buses are available. And finally, I have a lot of information here. Please feel free to ask any questions for me to review anything that I've gone over. Um, but we are offering domestic air. This is something that's new to us. Um, prices will always change. You know, I always want to kind of make sure we are aware that the pricing changes. But at this point, it's $4.95 domestic economy with one carry-on, which is phenomenal. You all, you know, more than everybody else uh, how good that is. So um, it's really been quite successful this first year of us offering this domestic air. Um, and it is protected by cancellation for any reason. You know, we have that, um, it's not insurance, it's just cancellation protection. Uh, and folks can just select it at the time of booking and then it will be paid for at final payment. We'll take care of the rest for you. Um, it is economy, so if you have clients who really want um, first class, unfortunately, they would have to kind of work that out on their own. So that's it. I really appreciate you joining me today. I went over quite a bit of information. Um, and please let me know if you do have any questions. I'd be happy to answer any. Oh, there we go. Perfect. We do have some questions coming in. Our first one is from Jessica, who is wondering if these experiences are for adults only or if children are welcome on board. Children are absolutely welcome on board. Um, it's funny to say that for the San Francisco Bay. I don't know if they'd be loving it in in Napa and that's sort of that's sort of where the distinction is where our excursions are not geared towards children what we find is people like multi-generational groups cruising with grandma and grandpa in like the lower Mississippi River area where people are learning about their home country um, you know of course being thoughtful and selecting the cruises is a good idea, but you know, maybe they might still be able to find something to do. You know, San Francisco is great. It's a lot of fun for, with kids. So, um, you know, there is no age restriction. You can come on with an infant and people do. Like I said, that age range has really expanded. Um, it's We're mostly still seeing couples, but children are welcome. We just don't have any programs specifically geared to them. Okay, got it. 
And our next question is from Tom. And I know that you went through so many amazing sounding itineraries, but the question is, what is the most popular, most booked itinerary on American? I would say I can't rule out. I, I, would, I have to say the, the lower Mississippi and the Columbia and Snake River are battling for those two spots. You know, it depends. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pick just one, I'm sure. Yeah. And then we do have another question coming in. Um, this question is from Leo, who is wondering if you can speak to any group policies. Absolutely. Um, you can. We can go into a little bit more detail on it on the portal. You can take a look at the full groups policy, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, what will happen, you give one of our amazing groups coordinators, both Sarah Smith and Wendy Whalen Smith, no relation. <laughs> uh, we just, um, Wendy is new to our groups department, so our groups department is growing. You'd speak to either one of them. They would help you narrow down a, you know, a time frame. Um, my best recommendation if you're looking to build a group is ask them what kind of ship they want first, especially if they're starting with the rivers. People tend to have a strong preference one way or another. Um, and then we would put together a quote for you. The group discount is straightforward. It's $600 off the stateroom. Um, those singles, we do have single uh, staterooms, not single supplement. They are single staterooms, so the singles are really getting the most of, out of that. But it's a $600 discount. Very, very straightforward. When you lock in the contract, by putting a deposit down on the stateroom, that means you're going to be locking in the pricing. And we do see price increases throughout the year, at least two yearly. So that's really the core of where you're seeing that discount. Plus you have either Wendy or Sarah holding your hand through the whole process. There's very little that we will not take care of for you, especially with this addition of air. Um, so I think that's really where our group's program stands out, that we have such phenomenal personalized service. Um, so please head to the travel advisor portal to take a quick look at the policy. Um, but the number to reach both of them is on the portal as well. So uh, I hope you do so, so you can build, build a group with us. Okay, great. And we, it looks like we just have one more question. We have a few people really excited about Alaska, didn't know that American sales there. And Lily is wondering um, if you can repeat what time of year you said is best to go on American to Alaska. We're only cruising in summer. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So, and and I, that's why I included it. I just said it to uh, Anna before the beginning of the presentation. People never know that we go to Alaska. Small ship cruising is the only way to go in Alaska. It's phenomenal. And we're only going in the summertime. It books very far in advance, as you might imagine. Um, we just have the two ships. Eventually, we will be having one of the um, catamarans, the uh, hybrid catamarans, Eagle class up in Alaska as well. So keep an eye on this space. We are expanding like crazy. So um, again, uh, summertime for Alaska, um, let your clients know. <laughs> Perfect. And those are all of our questions. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, Caitlin, for all of the wonderful information. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Yes, you as well. Bye, everyone.